Last week we were talking about exactly how much cash you were gonna to need to get into your first home. We talked about our no deposit, our low deposit, and our standard kind of five to 10% deposit options through banks. But I got a question during the week from Mike to find out exactly how much funds or what cash you're gonna to need to get into your second home. So whether it's about staying in your existing home, buying an investment property, or maybe renting out your existing home and moving into a new property yourself. So that's exactly what we're gonna be covering off in our Just Ask Tim video series, guys. But before we kick it off, let me introduce myself. My name is Tim Guest, I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the managing director of Infinite Wealth. I've trained over 18,000 people how to reach their financial goals. Whether it be things like home ownership, travel and lifestyle, all early retirement, we do it using only what people currently have available to them right now, and we do it using very high customer satisfaction ratings. Now, whether you're a first time, whether it's your first time tuning in or you're a long time follower, welcome along guys. Thanks so much for spending your time with us. We love to see your interaction with these posts. So please like, love, angry, comment, question. Tell us how you feel. Tell us what you think. Um, and of course, the only other thing that we ask that you do is you share these videos with your friends and family on the social media platforms. Um, uh, it, it keeps me inspired to do these videos, guys, and at the same time, also, it gives your friends and family the benefit of this very valuable information as well. So like I said, how much funds are you actually gonna need to get into your second home? So let's talk about buying a second home, for example, before we talk about your existing home. So it's gonna be a little bit like what we talked about last week, except for the fact that there's no no deposit or low deposit options available. So let's start off by talking about, let's say, a $500,000 house, right? $500,000 house, you're gonna look at buying that, you're gonna need a minimum of a 5% deposit. So 5% of uh, $500,000, you're talking 25K. We also need to worry about some funds for settlement fees, things like that, so I normally like to allow allowance of around about $4,000, and then on top of that, you've also got your stamp duty. Now, if you're looking at building, if, so if you're building a house that's gonna be totaling about $500,000, you're buying a block for 250, so you're talking stamp duty of about $7,000, or if you're buying an established home for 500,000, um, what you're really actually talking about is $18,000 worth of stamp duty. I'm not sure if you guys can see that there, so let me just move the camera right. So $18,000 worth of stamp duty, Add all those up, so if you're building, what are you talking about? 36 grand, uh, and if you're buying established, let's talk about 18, so we're talking 43 and 11 is $54,000. Okay, so they're the funds that you're gonna need, but are you gonna actually need that in cash? Okay, no, not necessarily, because remember, we're talking about buying the second property, so we, can, or we may be able to utilize the equity sitting in your existing home to enable you to do that. So let me just run through a couple of figures there, right? So. Let's say your existing home is also a $500,000 home, okay? Now maybe though you've had this home for a number of years and the reality is you've only got a $200,000 mortgage on it. So you may be able to use some of this equity to actually fund these deposits here. Now currently, the way that the banking industry is working, currently banks will allow you to go up to a 90% LVR, 90% loan to valuation ratio when it comes to refinancing your existing home. So 90% of 500,000 means they'll allow us to go up to a maximum of $450,000. At the same time, we've already got a loan of $200,000, so we need to subtract that off. And that would tell us in this particular case, this person has got $250,000 worth of equity that they could use. So they could actually use this equity to fund the deposit for either building a home or for buying an established home. So if you wanna look at the kind of funds that you're gonna need, this is what this example here will give you an idea about the kind of funds that you're gonna need regardless of whether you're looking at building or buying established. And you can also use this calculation to determine how much of the usable equity you can access. Now, it is all subsequent. You need, do need to apply to a bank. Um, so you've got to get your loan approved to be able to do that. However, it, it certainly is a better opportunity of using the equity in your home rather than the, your, your cold hard cash, okay? So Mike, I hope that answers the question. I hope that gives you the information that you were looking for. A couple of things before we go, guys. Now, of course, we love seeing our interaction with these posts. So please like, love, angry, tell us what you feel, uh, tell us uh, what you think. Um, uh, of course, if uh, you've got a question for your own Just Ask Tim video series, something that you want me to talk about in more detail or something that you want to answer, please you can com send it through in the comment box below uh, or really on any of our social media channels. So if it's me personally, Tim at Tim Guest AU or Infinite Wealth at Infinite Wealth AU, we can be in contact there. Don't forget also to, to share these posts with your friends and family so they can get the benefit of this valuable information as well. And guys, I'll be coming at you on Friday with our uh, The Wire series, the week in real estate, where you can get all the top stories happening from the week in finance, real estate, investment. That's it for me, guys. Have a great week, and I'll speak to you on Friday. Look forward to talking to you then. Bye-bye.